yeah, can you hear me well? Yeah. Uh, so thanks for being so many. Uh, it's almost lunch break, so please bear with me. Uh, it's almost time to it. Um, we're going to talk about machine learning APIs. Uh, first of all, a quick introduction. So my name is Laurent Picard. As you can hear, I'm French. I live in Paris. Um, you can follow me on Twitter um, at Picard Paris if you want. Um, I work for Google. I'm a developer advocate, uh, and I focus on Google Cloud Platform. I'm a software engineer, by the way. Um, before that, in a previous life, I co-founded Bookin, an ebook pioneer. And even before that, um, I was one of the three guys who made the first ebook reader in Europe. So that was back in 1999. Yeah, you can tell by my gray hair. Um, so we made this first ebook device. It was weighing one kilogram. So it was a big tablet, a big iPad of one kilogram, pretty heavy, but it was working. Uh, so that's why, what we call Pioneer. So as you can guess, um, I've been doing a lot of embedded development software, uh, embedded software. Uh, I've been working also on cloud. I didn't know it was a cloud, but actually we developed an ecosystem to be able to buy ebooks and synchronize everything from Android, iOS, but also be, being able to, to buy um, from, from the web and read on your device. And I joined Google uh, one year ago, so that's pretty new. Uh, and it's a lot of fun to, to work with uh, cloud services. Uh, so now, uh, your turn. I'd like to know who is the developer in the room. OK, uh, let's say two thirds. Um, who is a data scientist? So I'm not. <laughs> Okay, okay, so I hope you will learn a, a few things, uh, but you already know, know a lot. Uh, who is not a data scientist, but has already been using uh, machine learning services? Okay, so I hope you will learn a lot. And who is somehow using already cloud services? Okay, okay. So great. So the agenda is pretty simple. Um, we'll I'll give you um, an overview of machine learning APIs, and then we'll, we will have some action, OK? So let's meet Google Cloud machine learning APIs. So first of all, uh, the machine learning APIs are part of Google Cloud Platform. So Google Cloud Platform uh, is made of, let's say, roughly 70 different um, services, cloud services. And as you can tell, we do love blue hexagons, OK? Um, they are um, sorted by family. So you can actually do compu computing if you want. You can uh, do big data in the cloud. You can store uh, and also uh, have different databases, services. Uh, everything related to security, IoT, and machine learning here. So the, that will be the topic today. Um, but also everything related to uh, development tools, um, how to deploy your solution in the cloud, secure everything, and of course, a lot of solution related to networking. So that was just to, gi to give you a, a quick um, idea about what GCP, Google Cloud Platform GCP is. Um, if we um, take a step back and try to think where we are right now regarding machine learning, um, I think there are three ways you can benefit from machine learning. So if you're already uh, a data scientist, um, I would say 20% among you are data scientists, uh, you already know about machine learning a lot. Uh, and some people have been doing machine learning for decades. So this is not something new. Um, but if you're just a developer, you can use machine learning APIs. This is what we will see into details. And there's a third way called AutoML that is filling the gap. I will just mention it. So let's have a look. So machine learning APIs. So API, does everyone know what an API is? Yeah, so an API is an interface. So what it means is that you can do a web request with the data that you have. You will get a response back. So here um, for web, this is a JSON response. And it is in this response, you will have information. You provide data, and you get back information. This is what machine learning is about. 
uh, so you can get a lot of different insights uh, about the data that you provide. So we will get into the details uh, a bit later. Uh, the second solution, AutoML. So um, I will not get into details here because it would be worse a talk by itself. And I, I have to learn about it. This is pretty new. Um, and when you, what you can do with AutoML is actually uh, use an existing machine learning uh, neural network and customize it with your own data. So if you're interested, you can have a look. AutoML, you will find easily. We have a first solution called Cloud AutoML Vision but the whole family will expand, okay? Um, if you want to just maybe a, a small mention, um, uh, maybe you've heard about transfer learning and also hyperparameter optimization. So this is, these are the few techniques that are used here. It al allows you to actually build your own model without being a data scientist and even without be, being a developer at all. So this is really easy to use. Third, for data scientists, machine learning. So here, this is an example um, in the Google ecosystem. So we've developed TensorFlow. That's an open source library. Um, and you can actually get it uh, for free uh, from the web. You can install it on your laptop. And you can actually design uh, and train your own neural network. So this is what uh, actual data scientists do. Um, so it means you can um, build a machine learning model on your laptop. Uh, if you want something accurate, very precise, most of the time you will need to provide a lot, a lot of data. And the training will take days, uh, if not weeks. So this is not very efficient. So in this case, you can actually take your TensorFlow model and you can deploy it with Cloud Machine Learning Engine. And instead, instead of days, it will take hours. So why? It's because we have an optimized architecture. Uh, it will be using GPUs, but also TPUs. So a TPU is a tensor processing unit. So this is actual hardware boards that were made from scratch with the idea to optimize um, machine learning training. So your model will be trained in the cloud in a few hours by using dedicated hardware. OK? I've not done that so far. And if you're a data scientist, maybe you have. OK. So let's get started with the first API. So here, the data that we have is text. It's called the Natural Language API. So we provide text, and we get as much information as possible from this text. Here, we, get, we can analyze the syntax. We can recognize the entities. And we can also recognize the sentiments that are in the text. OK, so a few examples. So I'm a fan of Tolkien, so I've been using a lot of Tolkien-related examples. So here I took uh, this sentence, Tolkien was a British writer, and so on and so on. Um, if I give this sentence to the API, the result I get is, first, that is, it is an English sentence, so that's correct. And second, I get the full syntax. So I get the type, the gender, and everything rela f related to each word. Uh, so I can exactly understand how the sentence is built. Uh, one thing I like um, is that you can also get the lemma. So here, for instance, the, the verb was is actually in the past tense. And I can know that it's to be. Uh, likewise, for nouns, uh, I can get rid of genders. Uh, in French, we have two genders. In German, you have three. So you can get rid maybe of masculine, feminine, and neutral, uh, and focus on what you're looking for. OK? So moreover, if I give the same sentence to the API and ask for entities, it's going to return three different groups of different entities. So as you can see with the colors. So the first one, for instance, Tolkien is recognized as a person. So it's telling me this word, Tolkien, is a person. Uh, but it's also giving me an ID. So MID. So this is an identifier in the knowledge graph. And the cool thing is that wherever um, I will be using machine learning APIs, uh, if Tolkien is recognized, 
it will always be this idea. So you have to think of that uh, Tolkien is not always written like this. This is also G.R.R. Tolkien. He, dis he doesn't have a pseudonym, but if he had, it would be recognized li likewise. He, had a son, he has a son, by the way. His son is not recognized as Father Tolkien, right? Uh, his son has a different ID. So likewise, for the second group, British here is recognized as a location related to United Kingdom. And the three books that are at the end are each recognized as a work of art. And each time I have an ID. So this is pretty uh, useful if I want to recognize something very precise. Okay? And of course, also you guessed uh, here, um, I have a link to each Wikipedia page for each entity. Okay, so we saw that you can understand how the text is built, but you, you can know also how, what it is talking about. The third thing is that you can know whether it is talking about something positively or negatively by analyzing the sentiments. So what I did is I, I took two example reviews, a, a positive one from the New York Times back in the day, so a long time ago, and a neg negative one from Goodreads. Goodreads is a short social network for book lovers. So this is the New York Times ones and the negative one from Pauline. So I give these two reviews to the API and the result are sentences sorted by uh, with scores, uh, ranging from minus one to plus one. Minus one being the most negative, of course, and plus one the most positive. And the cool thing is uh, it actually works. Um, the three uh, sentences at the top are actually from the New York Times. Um, it was a very positive uh, review. And the three negative sentences here come from Pauline. She didn't like the book at all. So it can be pretty interesting if you want to understand uh, the sentiments in emails, in tweets, I don't know, in a corpus of text that you have. Uh, without looking for everything. So I've been mentioning the API. You can do a web request and get the JSON back. Um, but if you're not a web developer, uh, we have wrappers in different languages. So we cover seven different languages. I will always forget uh, one or two, but that's Python, Java, Node.js, PHP, uh, .NET, Ruby, and I forgot one. <laughs> okay, uh, so the way it works is always pretty similar. Uh, you import a package where everything is uh, pretty wrapped for you. Uh, you create a client here, a client for the language API. You provide content. Here, this is a movie review. And you just call a primitive. Here, this is analyze sentiment. And then you will get the answer back, but instead of parsing JSON, you will just have to use objects, okay? And here you can get the, the, the different sentiments within this movie review. That's simple to use. An example, so Okado, Okado is a British retailer. Uh, they have their own data scientist uh, teams, okay? And they try to optimize everything in their company. And it appears that they uh, prefer to use the natural language API instead of developing their own models because it works perfectly for them. So let me give you an example. Um, I have a team um, in the UK or in Germany, in Europe, uh, that is starting to work, a customer team. Um, over the night, there were 100 different emails. 19 99 of them are just regular emails providing feedback about a product, and one of them is mentioning a big bug in, in my system. Uh, and most of the time, for instance, it will be pretty negative. Your service is not working anymore, uh, I'm pissed off, and so on and so on. So, thanks to machine learning, what you can do is actually analyze everything you get from your uh, customers and treat the different requests differently. For instance, that one email, maybe, maybe it was the last one, but it's very negative. Maybe you want to treat it first before the other 99. So it's a matter of optimization. You can actually react faster 
uh, with the same team. The same team is going to do the same work, but they are going to be more efficient and treat that particular case. Uh, so if you're interested, they are very uh, vocal about it. So they, they, they have written a few articles. You can have a look uh, at Ocado and machine learning, and you will see how they improve their different processes. They still have data scientists, but they are also using machine learning APIs. The second API, so here the data is still text, but the information that we want to get is the same text in a different language. I will not go, <laughs> go into details because everyone knows Google Translate. If anyone doesn't know Google Translate, please uh, raise your hand. <laughs> uh, so so you, you all know it, uh, either on the web or, or on your mobile, you use it somehow. So you can go from 100, over 100 different languages to the same languages, so that's thousands of different combinations. So likewise, it can detect the, the language that you, the, the text, the language of the text that you provide. It's still very easy to, to, to use uh, because this is an API. Um, and there's something I wanted maybe to, to mention to you. Um, a couple of years ago, so I was not working at Google, but as a French user, I really uh, noticed something. The quality uh, with the translation uh, engine jumped almost from one day to, to, to another. And since I work at Google, I got the explanation. So that's pretty easy. What happened is that uh, the Google Translate um, engine used to be a rather statistical model. And from one day to the other, it switched to a pure machine learning model. And that's how the quality jumped from an OK or good uh, um, translation engine to a very good one. So English, as, as they start to, to work in English, has always been very good. But for instance, French and, and pretty sure uh, German a couple of years ago was not that good. It was OK, but it produced some weird sentences. And since we switched to machine learning, uh, the quality is very high. So it's still not uh, human quality. Translator still have a few years before them. Um, but it's getting better and better thanks to machine learning. Okay. So here uh, another Python example. So still uh, that simple. You create a client and you call translate. And here in this code, I actually have more commands than code. There are two uh, two lines of code needed for that. Okay. So an example with Airbnb. 60% uh, of the bookings they do are with users who don't speak the same language. So if they had done nothing, it wouldn't work <laughs> well. Uh, so they're using the translation API to translate virtually everything. Uh, they translate the listings, they translate the reviews, but also the communications between the users. And thanks to that, they, 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 they'll uh, significantly um, increase the likelihood to, to make a reservation. Okay, third API. So this time we are use, we're talking about audio. Okay, the input data is audio, and the information we want to get is text. So we are transcribing audio into text. So like the other language APIs, it works with over 100 different languages. So it does cover. Um, uh, German, but also variants uh, like Austrian, uh, Swiss, uh, and so on. Um, the results, uh, you get the results in real time. So this is why we can have now assistance, because we can talk to them and they can uh, transcribe what we're saying into real, uh, in real time. This is also robust to noise. Without that, assistance wouldn't work, because they would catch everything from the TV, uh, or from uh, surrounding noises. And if you want to use it in a professional uh, context, uh, you can make it uh, context-aware. Uh, so let me give you an example. Uh, if uh, I wanted to develop a solution in a hospital, it's very likely that most um, people will use medical terms. This is not something that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. 
and maybe some acronyms. So to improve the accuracy of the speech-to-text API, you can actually provide a dictionary by mentioning, OK, uh, here are words that are more likely to occur uh, because we are in a, prof in a very uh, specific context. Okay. Um, also, one uh, recent feature is you can get the different timestamps. So you can know exactly where uh, each word occurred in the audio uh, stream. So think about that you can actually provide, I don't know, dozens of, rec of hours of recordings and you can index everything thanks to that. And just look for some words and then you will know where each word has been pronounced. Okay, so you can maybe imagine uh, many different things. Another example, so we've seen, it's a bit like Airbnb. Uh, Azer is a matchmaking uh, app. And so they are translating everything, but moreover, they are transcribing the voice into text so you can actually talk to the person you want to meet. Uh, your speech is transcribed into text. The text is translated to uh, your correspondent language. Okay? So now, a new API. It's the reverse, text-to-speech API. So this time, the data is text that you provide, and you get audio, you get uh, the text uh, uh, read aloud, for instance. So as you can see, this is beta. This is pretty new. But actually, this is maybe one of the um, data processing uh, algorithm that has been here for decades. Uh, in 2000, I've been using a TTS, TTS being a text to speech. I've been using a TTS engine in this first ebook reader I mentioned. Uh, so it, it worked. Uh, you could actually say, OK, read me this book aloud. It would synchronize every word, and it would read it aloud. So I made it. Uh, so I know how I did it. Um, it worked, but nobody used it. The voice was so unbearable that you tried it for 30 seconds, one minute, and then you just stopped. You couldn't hear a robotic voice. So here, what is new? Um, um, yeah, let's say for the last 20 years, um, many companies have been developing such solutions. Uh, they're starting by uh, working on phonemes, then half phonemes, and so on and so on. And so the result has been better and better. But here, this is a real breakthrough. Um, so it was announced uh, less than two months ago. Uh, so this is WaveNet. It has been developed by DeepMind um, in London. So this is a Google subsidiary. Uh, and it also would be worth a talk by itself. So I don't know everything that is um, under uh, this uh, technology. Uh, there are uh, a few articles if you're interested in. Uh, so just look for WaveNet and DeepMind. Uh, but the cool thing is you provide text. You can provide a very long text. And in one second, you get 20 seconds of speech. And moreover, the result the voice is you, actual human quality. So you will see the results in the next weeks or months. Um, so for instance, the first result is that we will switch the voices on Google Home, for instance, uh, on the, the, the different assistants that we have. And for the first time, this is really the, the, a real breakthrough. Uh, this is actual human quality. So l let me give you an example with my teammates. Uh, we've been able to see the different uh, tests before it went out. And so we've been playing a game. Uh, we had the actual samples, the actual uh, recordings from the person uh, whose uh, voice uh, was um, analyzed and, and trained on. And we had the result uh, pronounced by uh, WaveNet. So we, we, we had something like uh, 10 different samples. And we, we were saying, OK, this one is from the actual person. This one is from WaveNet. And 50% of the time, we were wrong. So it means we have been unable to make a, the difference between the actual voice and the voice generated with WaveNet. And this is the first time with machine learning, I think, uh, that we've reached this level of human quality. Um, 
a couple of months, maybe you've heard about uh, Duplex. Uh, so it has been announced at Google I.O. Uh, so it was a lot of fun. So Duplex is another uh, building brick like WaveNet, but the two together uh, are able to make a call uh, and make a reservation for you in a restaurant. And the person in the restaurant, if the engine doesn't say, OK, I am an assistant, I would like to make a reservation, please, uh, the, the person uh, who took the call was not able to tell the difference, like uh, we did. So please have a look. You will hear more about it. Uh, this is a real breakthrough. Uh, I'm very excited, and I will try to, to, to work on that and, and make a demo uh, in the next months. But it, me it means a lot because uh, it means that you will be able to have actual, very pleasant conversations with uh, assistants or any uh, devices. Um, and maybe I will be able to hear a book read aloud with pleasure. OK. Um, another API, the Vision API. So this is my favorite one uh, for personal reasons. Um, as a software engineer, I learned how to make algorithms to process images. So we were trying to detect edges. So we're trying to recognize some features in pictures by algorithm, by implementing uh, code. But here, the Vision API is purely machine learning based. Okay? Uh, it's able to detect labels, faces, text. It's able to detect whether a picture is violent or contains some specific content, uh, for instance, medical content. Uh, able to detect landmarks and logos. A few examples. Uh, a few examples. It's easier to uh, to reason on that. So, for instance, I took a picture uh, on the web about Paris. I give this picture to the API, and it's telling me, yeah, this is about Paris. I get the rectangle. Yeah, this is Paris. Uh, we have the Eiffel Tower. Uh, I get an ID uh, for Paris. So. Everywhere I use it, it will always be the same ID, whatever the language, whatever uh, you call it, Paris, uh, uh, different variants. Uh, I also get uh, the GPS location, so it can be useful. So, but anyone here can say it's Paris, I guess. Uh, so I took a second example. So there is an Eiffel Tower, but it's not in Paris. It's actually in Las Vegas. Uh, the API uh, does recognize that, okay? Uh, it tells me, okay, here, this time, this is the Paris Hotel and Casino, and if I, if I check the GPS location, this is in Las Vegas. But anyone living in Paris, or maybe yourself, can tell that this is not Paris. It's too bright, there are many things around the Eiffel Tower, so let's say it's also very easy for anyone to, to tell it's not Paris. So. I took a different picture, I cropped it, I zoomed in, I flipped it, I skewed it, um, I tried to fool the system to see how far it, it would go. And it still works. It's still able to recognize that this is a picture from Las Vegas. Uh, and as a, a person living in Paris, if I take one or two seconds, I say, yeah, this is the Eiffel Tower in Paris. So I would be wrong. Uh, like most people in Paris. Uh, so why does it work? Uh, I have to take maybe five, at least five seconds to, to make a difference. So here there's something that is not on the Eiffel Tower, but moreover, there are flags below, below the Eiffel Tower here, and there's nothing below the Eiffel Tower. But in one or two seconds, I would be wrong, okay? And here machine learning cannot be wrong. So this is, this is the limit, and this is pretty cool. Um, you see that it can be very, very accurate. And this is a picture that I took, but I modified it a lot. And of course, there's no uh, GPS information in the picture. It's also able to detect, to give you labels. So here, this is a picture uh, in New Zealand. Um, I guess this is where uh, the movies uh, about uh, Lord of the Rings were uh, shot. Uh, and the Vision API tells me that it is about nature. Uh, there are trees, woody plants, it's a photography. Everything is correct. There's a sky, there's grass. So pretty cool. I can get a, 
a sense of what is in this picture. But moreover, there's a sign here. So it's also telling me there's a block of text in English and it's written no admittance except on and so on. And here this is pretty hard to read. The, the, the font is not that legible and also there are small stresses on the different vowels. Uh, the only mistake it's making here is missing a space between except and on. I didn't try uh, recently, maybe it's fixed now, but uh, it works very well. Maybe you've tried the Google Translate uh, app uh, in a foreign country and you can actually uh, photograph or live shoot uh, any sign and get the translation uh, live. So this is using this technology. It's also able to detect faces. So here, for instance, I will get, so I took a picture of Gollum, uh, so rendered in 3D by someone on the web, um, and it's able to give me the location of the, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and everything. It's also able to detect the sentiment in the picture, like we saw uh, in text. And here, it's telling me that Gollum is angry. Yeah, that's right, and most of the time, uh, Gollum is angry. Okay, and here's the, 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 the type of response that you get. Um, you can get the position of everything. By the way, this is in 3D, though, so you can maybe reconstruct uh, something in 3D based on, on a 2D picture. And um, you get the likelihood of the different sentiment. So here, uh, very unlikely to be uh, joyful, uh, sad, surprised. Uh, but likely to be hungry. And also you get a sense of the quality of the picture. So here the, the picture is not underexposed, it's not blurred either. Uh, and you can also know whether the face is wearing something on its head. Okay. We will try that uh, a bit later altogether. It's also uh, able to recognize web entities. So we saw that with text, it also works with pictures. So here I took a very rare picture uh, about Tolkien um, that I found on the web. I n had never seen this picture before. It's able to recognize that this picture is about Tolkien uh, and also um, maybe the Lord of the Rings. So this is because um, the Spanish article using this picture that was taken for this uh, uh, newspaper uh, is actually uh, talking about the Lord of the Ring. And here, with this API, I can get uh, the location of this picture, this exact picture on the web. I can get the web pages using this picture. And I can also get visually uh, matching pictures. So for instance, I will get uh, pictures where there's a man in a forest or against a tree. Of course, not Tolkien, but visually similar pictures. Oh, and yeah, and as you can see, we still have the entity ID. And here it's about GRR Tolkien, so I can just use the ID if I want to work in a canonical way. Still very easy to use uh, from a developer point of view. Uh, you, cur you create a client, you provide the content, and you call here, for instance, face detection. And you will get uh, all the different faces with the different sentiments. I've be, for instance, I've been using that, uh, you will see later. Uh, last API is the Video Intelligence API. So you can guess it's, it does pretty much what the Vision API does, but moreover, you have an additional dimension, time. So for instance, uh, if I take a video in my apartment, and at some moment, my kids will enter the room and will, shout, will be shouting and crying everything. Uh, the API will tell me from this moment to this moment, there is a sequence where there are kids, children, and they're happy. So likewise, like for audio or text or pictures, you can think about indexing uh, all your corpus of videos and exactly uh, know what is happening in your videos. Uh, of course, it can also detect um, the type uh, of um, content that you have. And this is just the beginning, 
Okay, there will be a, a lot more coming. So I've been quick. Um, there's a lot uh, you can do. Uh, what I propose is to have some action uh, with uh, a few examples and a live demo. Okay. So I'm doing well on time. So here, uh, so this is the Google Cloud um, uh, platform um, public uh, space, where you can actually try everything that I mentioned before. So here I'm in the uh, Vision API part. Uh, I'm going to take, yeah, uh, to provide, uh, to test a few pictures. So here, this is a picture uh, normally about Munich. You should recognize it. I don't because I don't know Munich. It's my first time here. Uh, what it's telling me is uh, that this is the Marienplatz. Is it right? Yeah, okay. Thank you. Uh, so it's giving me the GPS location. Uh, it's pretty sure, yeah, 81% that this is the Marienplatz. The labels, uh, so it's a landmark, it's a well known mo monument. There's a sky, it's about a city historic site. Sorry. Uh, a big city. There's a medieval architecture. Uh, it's a tourist attraction. Yeah, everything is right. Um, there are spires. So the spires are the little parts uh, at the top of uh, the church. Uh, and it's also about Gothic ar architecture. Okay, so everything is right. Um, regarding web entities, this is mainly about Munich. Still right. Uh, and to give you an idea, if you want to pass to JSON, or here is everything that you can get, uh, so a, lo a lot of insight regarding Munich. Um, second picture. So this is a picture I took yesterday. So I went around here. So I didn't find many uh, monuments here. But so I took a picture. Uh, it, what it tells me is, is that there are trees. That's right. There's a wall. Uh, I wouldn't say there's a wall. Um, but there's a walkway, that's right. So everything here is a walkway. And yeah, we couldn't recognize that too. But for a computer, I guess it's pretty hard to recognize a, wa a walkway. There's a road surface, that's right. Uh, and a monument, OK. And you have the confidence every time. So it's up to you to decide where you, you want to stop. So yeah. Uh, it's correct. I, I guess there are not many pictures about uh, this on the web. Uh, yeah, so it has not been able to find the location yet, but maybe next time it will uh, tell you, oh, this is just nearby. Okay. Um, let's try. So I took another picture just uh, very close to it. Uh, and I really wondered what the result would be. So this is uh, two minutes away. Uh, it's telling me it's about a rhinoceros. That's right. Uh, but the cool thing is telling me it's a sculpture. It could be missing it uh, for an actual animal, but it's telling me it's a sculpture of a rhinoceros. So pretty accurate. Uh, maybe in a zoo. So here it's not a zoo, but uh, you have enough uh, information maybe to, to use it the, the, the way you want. OK. Uh, last example. So this is a picture I took on the web. I guess you know this person. So here it does recognize a face, of course. It's very confident about it. Um, so I have everything, eyes, nose, and everything. Uh, the person is joyful, happy. Yeah, very likely. So that's the maximum. That's, that's correct. Um, and the labels I have. This is a person. Uh, the funny thing is, it's telling me it's a, maybe a television presenter. <laughs> so that's funny because uh, most of the time, uh, with the, the the outfit, or not the outfit, with the the, the costume uh, they have, uh, they will be uh, related to something. Uh, like this. For instance, uh, if I do the same with my president, Macron, uh, it will tell me uh, that it's a businessman because he's wearing a suit and a tie. Uh, but yeah, he looks like a businessman. And we could say that Angela looks like a television presenter, right? 
uh, or I mean in this picture. <laughs> so pretty accurate too. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know where I can stop. This is a socialite. I don't know what it means. Uh, yeah, business person a little bit, and it's an official yeah picture. Uh, for web entities, it does recognize uh, Angela Merkel, uh, and tells me it's about Germany too. So pretty, pretty, pretty accurate. Okay. So you see, very easy to use. You provide the data, you get the result, and you can use it. And most of the time, it's very accurate, uh, and it's up to you to, to, to put the cursor where you want. Uh, I propose you more, OK? You, you still have time. You can wait a little bit until lunch, yeah? OK. So what I propose you is a live demo, but this time, you will provide the data, OK? So if you have a, a smartphone, please uh, get it connected. Uh, and I hope it will work. <laughs> So, first of all, a small disclaimer. Uh, no servers uh, have been harmed uh, when I made this demo, and no servers are going to be harmed. So it's a, a small joke, but uh, I wanted to uh, mention the term serverless. So I'm, I'm a software developer, but I'm in no way a DevOps or a cloud specialist, not yet. And everything I try to do is from the most simple point of view. And here, serverless has been very, very useful. So what it means is that I wrote code, and so a few functions, and I've been able to deploy everything on the web without ever configuring any web server. Okay, Everything is related to services. And also what it means, uh, what the term serverless means, uh, is that everything is maintained by engineers who are spe spe specialized uh, in that, uh, so I can feel confident. I deploy my code, and I can sleep. Everything will work. And if something goes wrong, it will be repaired by uh, the maintenance engineers. And also, serverless means that um, I only pay for what I use. So for instance, I set up the demo uh, yesterday morning, and since then, I was the, it's a private demo, so I've been the only one to try it, to make sure it, it, it would work. Uh, and since, so here it's in sleep mode. All the resources for this demo um, are, are not there. It downscaled to zero resource. I'm going to, be, to start using it now, so it will create an instance. And when you will all use it, if needed, it will automatically upscale. It will create more instances. Okay? We will have a look. Uh, so I call this demo uh, the Stash Club. So maybe it will ring a, way, <laughs> ring a bell, uh, Fight Club. Uh, in the Fight Club, there are eight rules. So I will not uh, tell you the, the eight rules here. I will just keep three different rules. So first rule is you do not talk about Stash Club, OK? This is a private Stash Club. Second rule, you do not talk about Stash Club, but OK, you can tweet about it. Uh, and the last rule, if it's your first time at Stash Club, then you must get your stash, okay? So let's get started. So here, I'm going to my uh, backend. So this is ugly, but this is an admin backend. I'm going to give you a QR code. Yeah. And if you cannot uh, scan the QR code, you can actually go to bit ly slash mlconf munich. OK? So I'll, I'll give you some time. And you should be on the front page saying, please wait for instructions. Yeah? Is it OK? Yeah? If it doesn't work, bit.ly slash mlconf munich here. OK, so uh, let me go to the same place as you. OK. So the first thing is, OK, I go to step one. First thing is, if you refresh, it's going to ask for a nickname, just to have a, an easy identification for you, to recognize you. OK, so my name is Laurent. And then it will ask you, uh, 
the authorization to take a picture. So if you, you don't want a picture of you uh, to be public, uh, don't do it. Um, let me try that. Okay. I take a picture. So then it will vary on the speed of the network here, but the picture is uploaded. And what it does, so I wrote some code, it's going to trigger some functions and do recognition and some processing. And what I'm doing is I'm adding a, a moustache to everyone, okay, if there's a face. I'm mapping the same moustache to everyone, so we are equal, okay. Uh, you can do it diff diff a few times. Um, so, for instance, I'm going to do it again, but I'm going to try to express a sentiment. So, let's try to be angry. Okay? But you can try everything you want in any order. Uh, okay. Uh, let's try to be very happy. Oh yeah, the, okay. <laughs> yeah, I look a bit dumb. <laughs> and by the way, uh, with the moustache, I look like my father. Um, and let's try to be surprised. Okay, but you can try to be sad. Okay. Okay, so the moustache is mapped differently. So let's see how it worked for you. Um, so let's see who is happy here in the audience. Yeah, can you see? Yeah, okay, it works. Uh, let's see who's surprised. Okay. <laughs> let's see who's angry. Or oh, only one person. <laughs> uh, who's sad? Yeah, correct. And who's been neutral? Most of you are neutral. We are not in Switzerland, right? <laughs> so, but you can try uh, more and more. So, uh, it's, this is a very, very simple uh, demo. Um, let me show you how, how it works. So, what I did is the following. You are here, right? Uh, so, the small web snippets uploads a picture in a bucket. A bucket is like a folder in the cloud. And what I did is I wrote three different cloud functions here. The first one is triggered. Whenever there's a picture here, it will call this function. And this function will call the vision API here. And we'll store the result. You remember the JSON result? We'll store the result here in a different bucket. And I have a pipeline like this. It will, whenever there's an analysis for a picture, it will call this function. And this function will use the picture and the location of the nose, the mouse, and everything, and create a new picture with a mustache added, what I called a composite photo. And whenever there's a result here, so for instance, if I took a picture of all of you, uh, there would be many faces with many uh, mustaches, right? And what I do last, because if you take a picture with your smartphone, maybe there will be two of you or maybe someone in the back, what I do last is I take the biggest face, the largest face in the picture, and I crop it and store it here. And this is the result that you can see on your smartphone, yourself with a mustache. Okay, very easy. And for the developers in the audience, it's the code. The first function, very easy. I say, okay, I want to do safe search detection. So by the way, I will have to show you. I want to do face detection and safe search detection. So safe search is, I want to know what type of pictures I have. Uh, and what I do if uh, a picture is violent or inappropriate, I blur it, okay, uh, later on. So you see that the code is still very that simple. So let me try to add some guests. So here I'm going into the bucket where you all uploaded a few pictures and I'm going to add a few guests. Okay, let me check. Okay, so here I have four guests. I just drag and drop, but it's as if I was uploading the pictures. 
okay and so it's processing everything uh, and let's see the laser latest results say hey, so we have Albert who joined the club uh, and we should have also a couple more uh, yeah we also have Angela we also have uh, Emmanuel but we also have a, a zombie and as you can see the zombie got blurred because a zombie is violent okay so this code here is calling for um, uh, the analysis of the picture. This code here is downloading the picture, uploading the picture, and here recognizing the noise, the mouse, and mapping uh, a mustache. And the third function here is cropping, so is getting the rectangle for the face, but at the same time is checking whether this is an adult, medical, or violent picture and if it is then is blurring it okay so as you can see i just wrote this code and uploaded it uh, as cloud functions that, really that's it there's no server for me uh, to configure let's uh, continue uh, the demo the live demo um, what i've added here um, as a last step i'm going to try to use uh, the translation api and the natural language api so what I chose is to translate everything into English. So if you're, of course, you're speaking German, but if you're speaking Italian, uh, let's try even variants, uh, Austrian, I don't know, uh, uh, Swiss German, uh, any language, Japanese, Chinese, any language, uh, please feel free uh, to type it. Uh, so everything will be translated into English, and then uh, all the English sentences will be analyzed, and we will try I will show you that in a few seconds I can understand what everything is talking about. Okay. Um, so let's activate the last step. And if you refresh your web page or if you go to the next step, you can say anything to me. So I'm going to write something in French because I'm French, but tell me uh, whatever you, you, you would like. Uh, okay. Okay. And I'm going also to yeah, to input some pre-type text uh, English, French. So je déteste les pastèques. It means I really hate watermelons. Uh, I can use some emojis. Here is some Chinese text and some uh, Japanese text. Okay, and here is the feedback. Uh, oh, I don't have the pictures of you. Ah, oh, yeah, it's coming. Um, so, is that Turkish? Yeah, but it's the same in English. Je ne parle. Okay, the, uh, it, it got translated anyway. Uh, that's amazing. So, someone doesn't speak French. So, uh, it, that's not the way you write it in French, but it actually got correctly translated. Uh, so here it didn't work. Tan and teach B. I don't know what it is. Thank you uh, for the comment. It's some Spanish, some Chinese. I'm hungry. Uh, just five more minutes. Uh, Finnish, uh, French. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's hot in Munich. So you see the translation every time. Some Dutch, uh, German, German, French, uh, some Russian. Uh, processing never finished. Oh, okay, so maybe maybe there's a, a, a network issue, or I will check. Maybe I uh, got a bug. Uh, some Portuguese, Russian, Finnish, Deutsch, Swedish, uh, Romanian. <laughs> Every <laughs> I guess the result will all be uh, about eating. Uh, German, 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 Chinese, Japanese, English, French. Uh, so let's see the entities that you've been talking about. So someone talked about the Galatasaray uh, football club. 
uh, so actually two people, uh, two of you, uh, including myself, uh, talked about Munich, one about Paris, one about French, one ab about Bilbo. I missed that, so I will recheck. One about defense of the ancients. So I don't know what it is, but here I have the link. I, c I can go to the Wikipedia page. And uh, the names that you've been using are demo, resistance, presentation, raspberries. So I use raspberries, Munich, watermelons. Okay, so you can get an ID, but you can do a lot more, understood? And let's have a look at the sentiments uh, that you expressed. Super cool presentation, thank you. So all very positive. So how can, so you, oh, so this is, you will have to tell me what it means because Weirdly, it got uh, trans transcribed as very positive. I don't, so it, oh, thank you. So this is uh, not English. This is Irish. OK, so, there, so we have a bug here. So it should be recognized as uh, Gaelic, right, Irish? Uh, and trans so it didn't get translated. Uh, OK, Galatasaray, the best football team. So we, we, we will see. <laughs> Um, love raspberries. I would love to visit Munich, but I have to fly. So the, that's what I said. Uh, big fan of Paris. Thank you. Funny demo. So all very positive, you see. Uh, a few n neutral uh, sentences. And I'm af always afraid at the end because uh, we will get into the negative ones. Uh, I do not speak French, so that's not that negative. I really don't like watermelon, so that's negative on my, on my part. Processing never finished, yeah, okay, and I had watermelon, so you've been very positive, thank you. Uh, so as you can see here, again, um, it's been very, very easy to use. Here is the code uh, I used to translate. So as you can see here, I'm just uh, converting some text, but here is the code to translate, and here is the code to get uh, information, annotate text. So this is where I get all the web entities and the sentiments, everything uh, about what you sent to me. So the, the actual code to understand everything is very small. Most of the code uh, is just for the backend and the administration page that I made this. So this is crazy. For the first time, it's reverse. It's very easy to do what you want to do, but most of the code is just logistics, let's say. Okay. So, time to wrap up and to eat. Uh, two more minutes. Um, so, uh, I will publish this uh, on my Twitter account, but also I think uh, the, the ML conference will publish uh, my presentation. Uh, you can try everything online here uh, with these links. You, so, if you want to try a video or anything, uh, you can try also the, if you want to hear the human quality uh, in English for the time being, but uh, check out uh, WaveNet Voices. Um, if you want to uh, look for AutoML, uh, or if you're a data scientist, I guess you already need, uh, know that. So my, my goal with this presentation uh, was to have a step back and, and try to see what is possible today. And we can do a lot, even though we are not a data scientist. Uh, even if you're a data scientist, maybe sometimes it's not a good uh, solution to reinvent the wheel. Sometimes it's very easy. Uh, uh, the time to market is very fast to do some so to have some solutions. Uh, and anyway, you can almost do whatever you want uh, from being uh, a developer and using easy solutions and uh, up to a data scientist. Um, I'm pretty new to talks, so I've been doing that for less than a year. So your feedback is very much welcome if you want to tell me something. I will be around uh, for lunch, so feel free to ask anything and come to me. And you can follow me uh, on Twitter with Speaker Paris. So I hope you learned uh, a few things, and hopefully also I hope you, you got some ideas uh, about the futures and maybe about doing something. Thanks a lot for having me, and have a great lunch. Thank you. <laughs>